All right, so let's talk about another complex ceramic structure, the spinel structure. So the spinel structure actually is two types of spinels, and so we're going to talk about uh, both of them. And the first thing you probably notice uh, when you sort of see this slide is there's a lot going on, right? So this is a huge unit cell with, again, because of the complex uh, cations that we have, the multiple cations, it expands the unit cell. And so to see the whole structure, we have to see more of the, uh, the unit cell and there's more atoms in it. Um, so, you know, again, just kind of put that initial discomfort with this uh, aside and let's just kind of walk through some of the important things here. So the gem general stoichiometry of a spinel is an AB2O4. So they're typically oxides. Um, and we have two cations again. Here though, the B site cations have twice as many as the A site, and then we have four oxygens. And so the typical oxidation states to obtain this, because again, oxygen is always two minus, which gives us an eight minus. So we have to balance that. And to do that, we can have a uh, more, for the most part, we typically have an A site that is plus two and a B site it's plus three. So that can kind of limit the, the structures we have. This isn't the only type of oxid uh, oxidation states we can encounter. I'll show you an example of something different, but this is the common ones. The other thing uh, that uh, we want to kind of draw your attention to is even though this is super complex uh, and you can see these two diagrams trying to show you the structure, is it still has an FCC stacking of the oxygen ions. So same kind of configuration that we've talked about throughout these lectures on uh, ionic ceramics. So it's still the cubic close packed or FCC stacking of the anions. However, the filling of the cations is much more um, involved. So here, the cations occupy one eighth of the tetrahedral sites. So you remember there's eight possible tetrahedral sites in the FCC. So you only fill one of them. And so when it does that, it means that you have to show a much larger fraction of the structure to be able to show the overall uh, periodicity of the ceramics. And so that's why this is so big, because we only fill one eighth of the tetrahedral sites. So we need to show more of that structure. On top of that, we also fill um, one half of the octahedral sites. Right? So you can see it's quite complex. And so overall, this has an FCC Brave lattice, and it has 56 ions. <laughs> so that's 32 oxygen ions, right? So that's a lot. And so how we get to that from the Brave lattice of FCC is that there's four ions per lattice point. So each lattice point you can think of in an FCC Brave lattice is uh, tied to four different ions in the structure. So we have O2 minus at the FCC sites. We have the oxygen, or sorry, the A site, which is the A2 plus. Those are only in the tetrahedral sites that we have. And then the B plus three are only in the octahedral sites. So we have segregation of um, a sites in the tetrahedral, B sites in the octahedral. So this is what we would refer to as spinel or normal spinel. So let me, so this is basically kind of showing us that um, stacking of the FCC, albeit I don't believe it shows you it in a great way uh, to show you the stacking of those oxygen ions. But the, what I wanted to kind of show you here was that the spinel or normal spinel, because there's actually two different types, uh, is when we have the A sites exclusively in the tetrahedral and the B sites exclusively in the octahedral. What I mentioned is that there's actually the opposite. So we can have what we call the inverse spinel structure. And this is, you know, again, the same the same stoichiometry, but what happens here is that we have A sites and 
uh, half the B-sites go into octahedrals, and uh, the rest of the B-sites go into the tetrahedrals. Because again, there was two times the number of B-sites. So this can happen. So all of these uh, are result um, of the relative sizes of those cations, right? So um, because octahedral tend to be large, uh, larger sites, and so um, the larger cations tend to occupy the larger octahedral sites. So in this case, um, the a, this would tell us that the A site is relatively large, um, uh, larger than in the normal case. Because again, octahedral sites are bigger, and so the bigger ones go. So they're here, and then the rest of the B sites are tetrahedral. So again, these are fairly, these are complex unit cells to, to look at and to sort of wrap your head around. So again, I'm not wanting you to memorize these structures. Uh, I just want to sort of give you an overview of these different types uh, of complex structures and show you that they're built upon simpler structures, but the fact that we have multiple cations makes the unit cells more complex and bigger. So that's the main part I want you to get from this. All right, I want to show you an example of a spinel material in real life that's used. So uh, for rechargeable lithium ion batteries, there's uh, a number of different sets or structures or different types of batteries. Uh, and it all has to do with what the cathode material of the battery is. So one of those types, not the most common, but one of those types is a spinel lithium manganese oxide. So LiMn2O4. So from the stoichiometry, you can see that this is in fact spinel, right? Ab2O4. So this material um, uh, is a spinel, like we just talked about. So you can kind of, the, the structure is going to be the same. However, this isn't one of those cases where we had A2 plus and B3 uh, plus. Uh, Lithium is always plus one. And so that means that manganese, if you kind of do the math there, then um, this is uh, going to be eight minus. So this side has to equal plus uh, eight. So lithium is just one. So that leaves us with seven divided by two. And so manganese occupies this uh, interesting role in which it can have multiple valence states. And therefore, you'd expect it to be three and four to make the math work out um, on that. So this is one of those cases where we don't have the plus two plus three. We have plus one and then plus three and four. So this is kind of an interesting uh, structure, but this is an example of one of those cases. And in all of these kind of battery materials, the lithium ion batteries, the, uh, the structure, you want the structure to make it easy for lithium to move in and out of the structure because that's the charge carrying uh, species excuse me, in this battery. And so this diagram kind of shows us the lithiums. So the lithiums are the small red ones in the tetrahedral arrangements, right? You see both octahedral and tetrahedral. Um, so they're only showing the the, cathode, the the cations. So this is manganese, this is lithium. And so the lithiums are in these sp spots. So when we charge and uncharge the battery, the lithium has to hop from these sort of spots and so it's kind of in the zigzag linear fashion that it has to transport from so lithium diffuses in and out of those types of directions um, and because of that because it kind of has to hop in this like one uh you know one d direction um it's actually quite slow um slower than the other forms that we see uh, but also, because it's a little slower uh, and not as uh, rapid, it actually makes the structure safer. So some of the issues you've you've heard about in lithium ion batteries exploding and overheating have to do with the diffusion rates. So this one is actually quite safe, um, even though it's not as the performance isn't as great as some of the other um, options. So that's just one example of a lithium uh, or sorry, a spinel based lithium ion battery.